Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Palmy and welcome back to the number one dance video resource on YouTube. And in today's video, we'll be looking at how we can create our own meta RA shaders. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so in today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how we can actually create our own metal RA shaders. Now, I'm sure the first thing you're gonna say is, why do I need to learn this? Because if we go to the surfaces tab and go to presets and go to RA shaders and go to metal, we've already got some preset ones here, which is great. However, I think if you learn the individual settings and how you can manipulate them, then you can create your own uh, shaders, your own colors, whatever you need to do so you can add it to whatever you need to do in your scene. So that's the reason why we're doing this. And the actual creating of a uh, metal Irish shaders is a lot easier than it is for the glass one, which I already did. The glass one was very, very, um, very, very difficult to understand, but um, I think I did a good job on that. I hope I did a good job on that because a lot of people you watched it and got a lot of um, uh, great feedback from that as well so that's great so make sure to watch that as well the glass one i'll put the link up here on the cards over here at the top uh, make sure you go watch that as well so today we're going to look at metal irish shader so let's get started so the first thing i like to do is show you my environment settings because i know everyone always asks what are your environment settings i can't get the same settings as you i'm showing you here right now they're just the default settings i haven't done anything magical as you can have a look at all the default settings nothing's changed so there's nothing magic on my computer that's not on your computer okay so the first thing I need to do is add a prop. So what I want to do is add my uh, prop that I did last time, which was go to my props. I'm going to go add my containers and my lovely basket container, which I really love so much. So here we go. Here's my basket container. Okay, I'm going to click on my basket in uh, the prop in my scene tab. I'm going to go to editor and this one is an old uh, prop. So I need to convert it to iRay uh, shaders. So I'm going to click on the actual surfaces there. I'm going to go to presets shaders ira and go up a bit there it is ira uber base now when you normally when you have a prop these days majority of them are already have ira shader on it which is okay you don't need to do this ira uber base the only reason i'm showing you this is if you have older props then you can uh you know change it into ira uber base so i've done that now so i'm going to go to my editor and as you can see it's all changed we've got our ira settings here so the first thing i want to do to make it metal is this metallicity here I need to just put that to one. So it's like the uh, refraction that we did for the refraction um, uh, tutorial that I did for the refraction weight. So either it's on one, it's it's either metal or off. If it's on zero, it's not metal. So you can't have it halfway in between. It's either metal or it isn't. Okay, so there you go. Now you're probably wondering why hasn't it changed into metal? Because if we go down here, the glossy roughness is set to one. That needs to be set to zero. And then you'll see straight away it's turned into a metal. So there's our metal, which is awesome. We've got our metal basket, so to speak. So you're probably thinking that's it, the end of the tutorial. Uh, no, that's not the end of the tutorial yet. There's a lot more we can do. So what we can do is we can add like a brushed steel effect. So this is where you would change the glossy roughness um, to a value of, you know, a fairly low value. So probably something like 0.25. So for the 0.25, you'll see it's got like a brushed kind of steel effect. I'm just going to untick this. So when I move my mouse on it, it doesn't change yellow. So this is our brushed steel effect here. Um, obviously, the higher you go, the more roughness you get and you kind of you lose the mess metallicity. So you don't want to go too high. So you want to stay around about 0.5 and no more high than 0.5, really, if you want the brushed steel kind of effect. OK, so that's done. One thing I forgot to mention that is the glossy uh, layered weight needs to be one. So sorry about that. Glossy layered weight needs to be one because metal is obviously glossy. So we need to have that. And then we've got the glossy color here, which needs to be white to give us that reflection of glossiness, which is going to be white when you look at metal. Okay, so over here, we've got the base color. So we can just change the color of the actual metal we want. So at the moment, it's like an orangey. If you want to gold, we will try and do kind of a yellowy orangey color. So I'll try and find a gold color something like that maybe that's not it a bit more yellowy that used to be higher up actually there we go and there we go that's our kind of goldish color so that's how we can do gold or any other color you want you just go to the base color and you just change it like if I wanted blue here it would be blue oh, that's probably not a good color to choose but there you go so I'll go back to the kind of goldish color there we go our gold color so what else we're going to do is we can change the the kind of reflection, what it looks like, the reflection we're getting off our metal object. So if we go to the glossy anisotropy, what this does is you'll see, if you watch this while I change it, you'll see the light move. 
the actual glossiness moves. So you'll see it kind of move as you can see there is you can see it moving so we can change the kind of where it is the the direction of it so to speak so if you wanted it like that you could have lots of directions now vertical compared to what it was before when we have it over here it's kind of like coming down and around like this so we can use that glossy anastrophe to do that and if we go further down we can do the same thing so let's just turn that back up so we can just see that there there we go um, and then we could got the glossy anisotropy feed rotation. So this is where it kind of rotates the um, the glossier. So you'll see when I turn it up, it'll start rotating. Literally, there we go. And it'll start rotating. Where do you want the gloss to be, roughly? So we can kind of rotate the gloss. So that's a few more options you could do to change the appearance of your metal object. And what else we can do is we can add normal maps. So normal maps are really good for changing um, what it looks like. So I'll show you uh, uh, one right now. So I'm going to go to browse. So I'll click on this arrow. I'm going to browse. I've got a normal map here. And when I click on that, we're going to change the we're going to change the actual appearance of what it looks like. Now this map here is just a normal map. It's a uh, is it just normal? of course it's a normal map. What I mean is that the map is not actually part of this object. So you'll see these like seams here where it kind of joins. Uh, in a later tutorial, I will be covering UV maps, normal maps, displacement maps, all the kind of maps you can have to really alter every prop. So this is just a little tidbit here where you can see what normal maps do. It changes like the structure of, of the kind of uh, the prop uh, in terms of it's giving you that kind of appearance of, oh, look, there's like uh, bulges here and designs and things like that on the object. So you can use the normal maps. So you can obviously download these normal maps if you just type in Google, normal map and of an item you can download it for free a majority of them are free and you could change the way an item looks so here we've gone from a basic uh, basket to a kind of like a, a different kind of object using just using a normal map okay so how do we actually say if you wanted a black object that's colored in black but you wanted a um, light you wanted that to be a metallic object so how would we do that so first of all we would go to the base color and we would change that to very, very low values. Now you wouldn't have black, you would have very, very low values, something like grayish, like really here at the bottom, not all the way down, something about here. You click OK. And so it's gone all dark. So how do we get that reflection? So the way we get that reflection is we use the actual top coat setting. So over here, top coat, we're going to use one. One is the maximum value. And now we've got our reflection here. So you can choose the roughness, you can make it rougher so you can see like it's getting smoother. So the more roughness you have, the more smoother the reflection will be of the top coat. And then obviously we can move that around using the top coat anastrophy. So it will start moving around. There it is. And then we can use the rotations to rotate that where we want to as well. So that's how we would do it if you wanted something that was a black color, but you wanted it to be kind of shiny and have that kind of metallic uh, look to it as well. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how else can we use, how else can we create metallic objects? Uh, there's another way we can do it, which is probably not spoken about much. So if I just turn the top coat off, we don't need that anymore. I'm just going to uh, remove the normal map because I don't want that anymore. And what I'm going to do is just put that back to yellow so we can get a better idea of what it looks like. So another way we could do is we could turn our metallicity off. If we go down here where it says metal flakes and we turn that to one and you'll see what happens. So that's turned into metal now using the using metallic flakes to create that effect. So that's a metal object there. I'm just going to turn the glossy anastrophy down here. And I'm just going to, the flakes are white, which is great. So the roughness here, we could change the roughness. So the more rougher you make it, the less you, you lose that. And then you can metallic flake size, we can turn that up. So that makes the flakes bigger. There's our flakes. You can see our flakes now, they're a lot bigger. And you can always change the colors here, the base color. So if I turn it to actually a metal color like this, a grayish color, you can see it looks a bit more metallic. And then the density, you could put the density up. And there we go. We've got our metallic kind of object using metallic flakes. So the density obviously makes it more, the metallic flakes more denser. So you got this kind of look where all the flakes are together. And then obviously your flake strength is normally set to one. You can go higher if you want to. So we can click on this gear box here, parameter settings. I don't want to use limits except, and now we can go higher. So I can go as high as I want. And then you can see, so you can see the difference here. 
All right, another cool option we can use is here is the metallic flakes thin film. So the thin film, it literally adds like a very thin film, which is measured in millimeters. So if I do 500 here, so that's put a very thin film around the actual object and you can see the colors change now. The reason why the colors changed uh, with the thin film that's now 500 is, is this is this option here, metallic flakes, thin film, IOR. So index, index of refraction, same thing that we did with refraction in terms of the glass object, we could change the color of the refraction object here. So it depends on the color of this object. So if I change this to the base color to something else, say if we had some sort of bluish color, it's probably not the best one. Let's say if we had, yeah, we'll go back to yellow. So we have some sort of yellowish color and now I'm gonna change the uh, index of refraction for the metallic flakes. I'm gonna go down here. And at the moment, the default's always set to 1.5, but you can always change from values of one to five. So if I change to two, you'll see it change color. So the color depends on the value. It's uh, it's not um, a set value. So the higher you go, the, the colors change. So if I went to three, it will change again. And then it kind of starts disrupting. Once the index of refraction is too high, it starts disrupting the actual way it looks everything. So you don't want to go too high. So in this case, two is enough. And that's what we can do. So we've got a metallic object using metallic flakes. Now metallic flakes is not the best option really. Um, using metallicity is the best option really. Uh, you can use them in conjunction with each other like I'm showing you now. So you got metallicity on as one. We've got the metallic flakes on as well to give us that kind of metallic flakes kind of look. And we've got the color of the base color applying it on there with a bit of the metal which is from the metallic flakes color here, which is this here, this kind of metal one is through the metallic flakes. And then we've got the index of refraction here, for metallic flakes that's doing the color here as well. So as you can see, it's, you can go as complex as you like, or you can start basic, uh, that's really up to you. Okay, so once we've made our shader, how do we save it? So we've got to go to file, save as, shader preset. Okay, I've got my abey glass from my uh, glass shader and my liquid that I did with the refraction is still there as well. So I can just call this uh, metallic, metallic shader. I'm gonna save it. And this clay pot, that's fine. Click accept. So that saved it now. So how do I check to make sure it's saved? So what I'm gonna do now is go back to my content library, uh, my smart content, sorry. I'm just gonna click off that so I can see my props. I'm gonna add my container in again. I'm gonna hide that container, the original. I'm gonna click on here. Go to editor, surfaces editor. I'm just gonna change that to Uber base first. So Ira Uber base, so my shader will work. And then when I come here in my smart content to my saved files, we've got a preset. You'll see my obey glass ones are there and here's my metallic shader. I'm gonna double click on that and there we go. It saved my shader. So that's how you save your shader, metallic say, um, your metallic shader, just like we did with the Obey glass, glass shader and liquid that I showed you in the previous tutorial. So there you go, I hope you know how to use metallicity and how you can create your own metallic objects and how we can add normal maps to kind of change everything. So I could add the normal map here and let's see what that does now. Go to browse, go to my normal map and there we go. And we've gone from a very basic item to something that looks completely different and this is what you can do with me, the metallic shaders and how you can uh, create your own metallic objects. Okay, so there you have it. Now we've learned how we can create our own metal iris shader using the metallicity option in the iris shader and the metallic flakes and how we can combine the two together to create a very, very unique effect. Now, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit that like button, leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in next week's video.